Lord, what you will is. We also pray for the government here that they will continue to not act in that law that would prohibit us from this opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. We also pray for our children in the schoolhouses where, where they go in order to be educated. We pray you will be with the teachers, be with the children, and keep those roads safe from all matter, hurt, harm, and danger that is roaming around on the outside. We also pray the Father you would be with the teachers that they would always have the desire and love and want to teach our children and continue to make our children a better person in the future. We also pray the Father for the churches of Christ throughout the land and country that you continue to keep the doors open and continue, continue to keep ministers in the pulpit that they might be the priestess gospel of your son and that they might draw souls to thee and cause the lost world to find their way home. We also pray the Father as we could travel each and every day that we will live our life in a way that those who know not be in the parties of their sin will want to know thee because they know us. And we pray for those who know not be in the parties of their sin. We pray that you will not take them in the present situation, but allow them an ample time and opportunity that they might be able to hear this gospel being preached of your son, and that it might prick them in their heart and, and stir up their conscience and make them step out and dedicate their life to me and your son in, in his name. And we also pray that we have come to the last mile of the way and we have done all the things that your hand has assigned us to do. We pray that when the book is over, yeah. we will hear you say, well done, my good and faithful servant. We have been faithful over a few things. But I will make rule over men. That will be enough. In Christ, in your daughter and son's name, let the whole church say, Amen. Amen.
Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Son of God.
saw it from a strange day to come. Nevertheless, God bless each and every one of you. It is a blessing to me here this morning. Hope, trust, and pray that you all have had a fantastic week thus far. Hope, trust, and pray that all is well with you. Things could be better, things could be worse, but glory be to God. We serve an awesome God. Amen. I ask that you please continue to keep in your prayers our minister, Brother Paul Jones. Continue to pray for a sister. Yes. And also continue to pray for any of our members that are on the sick and shed in and preparing for this as well. Yes. Uh, continue to pray for Sister Goldie Bailey. I would encourage that she uh, tunes in to our YouTube program sometimes. So, Sister Bailey, if you're watching, may God bless you, may God keep you, yes. and we hope, trust, and pray that we will see you again real soon. Yes. Now, y'all, I won't be long, but I will be strong. Meet me at the book of Philippians. Philippians, the second chapter. Beginning at verse number 5 and concluding at verse number 11. A few of the sisters, they said to me, they said, Brother Jerry, you're going to have to stop letting these churches pull you away from us. But I have to tell you that I wasn't going anywhere to preach last week. I actually hit me close to them. It's try to take a vacation. <laughs> when you say try, I, why do you say try, Brother Jerry? Well, we had some plans, and then, lo and behold, Jada got sick, and Robin got sick, and Jordan just made all of our hearts drop last week. Uh, what went on with Jordan? Well, you have to ask her mother about that. But nevertheless, let us pray that one of these days, I'll get a vacation with <laughs> And everybody behave, nobody won't get sick, and i get some kind of rest as well. So y'all pray for this one. Philippians so chapter 2. Beginning at verse number 5 and concluding at verse number 11. Philippians, the second chapter. Beginning at verse number 5 and concluding at verse number 11. Oh, forgive me, y'all. Forgive me. Today is the birthday of Sister Laura Faye Hoffman. Sister Hoffman let me know that she turned 55 years old. <laughs> God bless you, Sister Hoffman. Then I also have to tell you that today is also Brother Larry Brown's birthday as well. Uh, Brother Larry keeps a lot of things going in the day. Brother Larry keeps a lot of things functioning properly for us around this church. And be honest with you, he helps us a lot of us out of our homes as well. So at the end of service, when you see Brother Larry and when you see Sister Hardy, be sure to tell both of them that happy birthday. Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse number 5 and concluding at verse number 11, the Apostle Paul exhorts the church at Philippi with these words. Paul says in verse number 5 of Philippians chapter 2, he says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of man, and being found in appearance as a man, Paul says he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted his name and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Y'all meet me at verse number nine. Again. Therefore, God has highly exalted his name and given him, notice the word him is capitalized in the text twice, and given him the name which is above everything. Yeah. That at the name 
of Jesus. Every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord yeah. to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Is that not in your Bible? Amen. Amen. Not too long ago, recently, I saw a YouTube episode where Jim Cramer was talking about stable investments in an unstable economy that we live in. Someone called in and they said, Mr. Cranmer, I am afraid to invest my money because the market is so unstable nowadays. As a matter of fact, you see what happened to the Weight Watchers. Yeah. As soon as Oprah Winfrey pulled out of Weight Watchers, Weight Watchers began to plummet. Yeah. Jim Cranmer went on to tell the car. He says, in this economy, you don't want to put your money in a risky investment. You want to put your money in a stable investment. Sister Alice has spent the next 10 minutes coming up with different stocks that he considered to be stable investments. Beloved, I stopped by this morning to let you know. I don't need 10 minutes to come up with a stable investment. Because in these unstable times, and dealing with unstable moments and sometimes dealing with unstable people, I want to let you know that Jesus is the only stable investment this Throughout eternity, Jesus has always been the only stable investment. And Paul lets us know that God has given him a name. Let me put a quarter in the call for me to the park right here just to remind you that each of us possess a name. Yeah. Our name is given to us by our parents. Yeah. Perhaps we were named after some relative or we were just given a name that our parents loved. Yeah. Whatever the reason or however you come by your name, it's probably no great significance that behind every name, there is a meaning behind that name. Yeah. Yeah. Just for the record, the name Gerald I looked up means rule of the spirit, whatever that means. But in our text, we are told of a name that does have great significance. The name of Jesus stands out, and it is a name that is above all other names. Even if you don't want to call him Jesus this morning, whatever the case may be, you have to acknowledge just how great of a Savior Jesus is. All the way from the letter A through the letter Z, the Bible outlines who Jesus is. The Bible tells us that Jesus is Adam. He is anointed. He is also author. He is the Amen. He is the Alpha, but he's also the Omega. He's the begotten Son. He's beloved. He's bred. He's bridegroom. He's the bright and morning star. Yeah. He's captain. He's the chief cornerstone. He's counselor. He's covenant. He's chosen of God. He is Christ all by himself. He's day's man. He's deliverer. He's day star. He's door. He's the desire of all nations. He's elect. He's inside. He's everlasting. He's also Emmanuel. He's the finisher of our faith. Runner. He's friend. He's a faithful witness. He's the fountain of life issues. He's God. He's the gift of God. He's our God, but he's also glorious Lord. He's hope. He's husband. He's the horn of salvation. He's the head of Christ. He's the heir of all things. He's hell's dread. He's heaven's wonder, but I call him the Holy One. He is the I am. He our inheritance. Yeah. He is the image of God. Yeah. He's immortal. He's invincible. Yeah. He's Judah. He's just. He's yeah. the judge, but I call him Jesus. Yeah. He's king. He's king of Israel. He's king of kings. He's king of glory, but 
only begotten Son. He is our burnt offering, but he also is our chief officer as well. He's priest, he's Passover, he's prophet, he's our propitiation, he's the prince of life, he's the prince of peace. And when you get sick, he's your great physician. Him and 
giving him the name which is above every name. The name Jesus was very popular in that day, as you can imagine. It was no different than any other name that is given to children today. Even in our day and time, we know it, the name Jesus is still popular. In the Latin American community, the name Jesus is very common. While this is true, the name Jesus is a special name because this name was chosen by the Heavenly Father for the Son to use during the time of his humiliation. Therefore, beloved, you and I must understand that there's something special about this name for three reasons. Something is special about this name because this name was handpicked by the Father. The name Jesus was not given to our Lord by his parents, Mary and Joseph. It was a name handpicked by God. This alone makes him stand out and it makes him special. Because you remember all throughout scripture, God has always given people names. But every time God gave somebody a name, God changed their name. When God changed their name, God changed their name because he wanted to change their behavior. For example, he changed the name Abram to Abraham, Jacob to Israel, Saul to Paul, and Simon to Peter. When God changed their names, yeah. God would also change their behavior as well. Right. But when God gave Jesus his name, that name was given to change our behavior. Right. That name was given to Jesus. Because you can't improve on Christ, but you can always improve on ourselves. Yeah. That name Jesus holds weight as well, beloved. Think about some great names that are mentioned in this world. If you look at the name Michael Jordan, some would say that that is the greatest basketball player that ever lived. He has six championship rings, scoring titles. As a matter of fact, that's how my child Jordan got her name. People will say that Jordan is the greatest man to ever play basketball. Search the name of Floyd Mayweather. You will see that there is a boxer who is 50 and old, has never lost a fight. Some will say that Floyd Mayweather is the greatest boxer of all time. Yeah. Brother David searched the name Tom Brady. Some will say that Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback that ever lived. Yeah. Won multiple Super Bowl rings, broke all kinds of NFL passing records. Some consider Tom Brady to be a goat in football. Yeah. Search the name Derrick G, yeah. the greatest shortstop in Yankee history. Won several golden, gold, uh, golden gloves, several World Series. But when you investigate the name of Jesus, right. you will find that Jesus is undefeated, yeah. he's unique, he's yeah. unparalleled, but he's also unprecedented. Yeah. As a matter of fact, let me lean into that for a second. Because when you put gloves in the hand of Floyd Mayweather, that's what makes him a great boxer. You put a basketball in the hands of Michael Jordan, that's what makes him a great ball player. You put a football in the hands of Tom Brady, that's what makes him a great football player. You put shoes in a stage in front of Beyonce Giselle, and some say she's the greatest entertainer of all time. But Jesus showed up with nothing in his hands. And that alone is what makes him the greatest of all time. As a matter of fact, you put, gloves, you put gloves in Floyd Mayweather hands, he becomes a boxer. Put a football in Tom Brady hands, he's a football player. Put a baseball in Derrick Jeter hands, he becomes a baseball player. But they put nails in the hands of Jesus. He became the greatest officer of all time. Yes, sir. Not only that, it's the name that points back to the Father. The name Jesus means Lord is salvation, or to be correctly, Jehovah is salvation. This precious, sweet name reveals a side 
follow Jesus that many fail to practice. Yeah. While God is a God of wrath and judgment, mm -hmm. Brother Pippin, sometimes we don't view Jesus as a God of love. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, 1 John chapter 4, verse number 8 says, God is love. Yeah. Beloved, if it has anything to yeah. do with God, then it has everything to do with love. God is love. That is God personifies love. As again, I submit to you, if it has to do with God, it has to do with love. When it comes down to mercy, that's God's forgiving love. When it comes down to grace, that's God's undeserved love. When it comes down to peace, that is God's comforting love. When it comes down to the will of God, that's God's unearning love. Yeah. Providence is God's caring love. Right. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is God's proven love. Yeah. Yeah. Sanctification is God's nurturing love. Right. Heaven is God's rewarding love. Yeah. And eternity is God's unending love. Yeah.
this also a stainless name. To every other name that it could be attached. Whether it be your name or my name. All of us have deeds that are good. But to be honest, we all have evil deeds. I knew I wouldn't get no amen right now. It's okay. But to the name Jesus, however, that name could be praised, it could be honored, and it could be worshipped because that name is a stainless name. It's a sinless name. But then Philippians 2 tells us that that name is reverence in three places. Yeah. Look at the text again. Therefore God has highly, highly exalted him and given him a name that at the name of Jesus, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven, those on the earth, and those under the earth. That name Jesus is precious in heaven. Because the precious name of Jesus is honored in heaven like it is nowhere else. When the name of Jesus is heard in the heavenly realm, it's a catalyst for rejoicing and praise. In heaven, the name of Jesus is a constant source of praise. But then Paul says also in earth. Most of the time, people use the name Jesus loosely on earth. But Paul says that name is reverence in earth. But then here's what Paul says, something that made me scratch my head for a second. Paul says that name is reverence in heaven. We get that. It's reverence on this earth. We get that. But Paul said the name is so powerful, Tammy, that it's reverence in heaven. While Jesus was here on earth, the demons gave him deep reverence, but also respect. They worked to overthrow his kingdom, but when demons hear the name Jesus, demons begin with fear and truth. Paul is saying that name is so powerful that God had to highly exalt him and give him a name that is above every name. Again, church folk don't know when to shout. Because when you hear the name Jesus, you should understand that when that name is mentioned, or when Jesus shows up, something has to change. Because at the name of Jesus, lives have been altered. At the name of Jesus, blind eyes have been opened. At the name of Jesus, deaf ears have unstopped. At the name of Jesus, sin shackles have fallen away. At the name of Jesus, night has turned into day. At the name of Jesus, death has been swallowed up in victory. At the name of Jesus, hope has replaced defeat. At the name of Jesus, lost men have been found. Devils have been trembled. Devils have trembled. Sinners have broken. Saints have shouted. Angels have bowed. Broken homes have been put together. If you haven't got it by now, y'all, there's something special about that name. Not only is it a stainless name, it's a stainless name because the Bible tells us Jesus was tempted hmm. just like we were, yeah. but didn't know any sin. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Slow down for a second. Slow down for a second. He was tempted yeah. just like we were, but knew no sin. Yeah. Have you ever tried to put yourself in Jesus' shoes when you're reading the Bible sometimes? Yeah. Okay, y'all know how to read that Bible. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when Jesus was 
Matter of fact, this is Palms, this is what they consider Palm Sunday, the week before Jesus was getting ready to be crucified. You remember before Palm Sunday, everybody was saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, praise him, praise him. But on the day of crucifixion, they were saying, crucify him, crucify him. Stay with me, y'all. How many of us have been in a position where folk were singing praises to our name? Hosanna, Hosanna. But the minute you do something they don't like, crucify him, crucify him.
Because when the name Jesus is mentioned, yeah. or when Jesus is present, things start, start to change in your life. Things change when you call on the name of Jesus. You see, one day Jesus was at a wedding first. He was at a wedding feast at Cana of Galilee. And his mother Mary called his name, didn't she? And told him that the host of the wedding was running out of wine. But Jesus tells her, woman, that don't have nothing to do with me. But Mary told the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do. Jesus instructs the servants to fill the water pots. And between the dipping and the sipping, Jesus turns ordinary water into extraordinary wine without using any grapes. Yeah. Because things change when Jesus yeah. shows up. That don't get it? Yeah. One day Jesus was in a desert place. Yeah. All the H-E-B, the Walmart, yeah. and the broker were closed that day. But there was a little lad in the crowd yeah. who had two fish and five loaves of bread. And the people began to get hungry. Everything. 
I told y'all about some great names. But the text says that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every knee will bow. Stay with me for a second. Can you just picture for a second if you will? You're sitting in a room, and all of a sudden, Barack Obama comes in. You'll get a smile. First black president got swagger like Jerry too. First <laughs>
once again we are blessed to have ever heard a sermon such as this. At the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, shackles fell, blind see, and hope was restored. And that's this is everyday life. This is everyday life for you and you. Call upon the name of Jesus and if you live the life that Jesus is telling us that we should live in order to satisfy God. Uh, then these things will occur at the name of Jesus. They will occur. You will live a better life. Uh, so we are asking you to take heed to the sermons that you will hear. And we are asking you also, let me, let me add this, uh, to attend Sunday school and learn about the Holy Spirit. We, we had in the last three or four weeks or so, three lessons on the Holy Spirit, calling up on the Holy Spirit to help you out. And this lesson is also among those lines, calling up on Jesus. We, uh, we have one to respond to the invitation and the person of uh, Les, Les, Lisa, Lisa Possible, Lisa Possible, uh, I would like to join the church. Yeah. 
Johnson, who is, uh, has gone through and is going through different things that has caused him to uh, need prayer for him and his family. Amen. So uh, we want you to uh, remember all of those that, and as well as Sister Sharon Hart, she is here this morning. Amen. Uh, she was determined to make it here this morning. And she's still under a lot of pain. And, uh, but she wanted to come this morning. And uh, uh, we're going to pray for her as well. And then remember, I will see Sister Sims. Remember Sister Sims. I uh, need prayer. She always uh, asks for prayer. And uh, so remember those uh, four. I have a Excuse me. So let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Uh, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, the Father, our Lord, and the Savior, Jesus Christ, once again, we are very thankful that we are able to come and worship you in spirit and in truth. Our Heavenly Father, we are very thankful that you have given your Son for our salvation. We are thankful that our mind is open uh, at baptism and that we saw the need that we should save our soul through baptism and take on the Holy Spirit. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful for your Son who uh, uh, brought about salvation. We come to you on behalf of those who are a part of our body who is uh, ask for prayer in the person of Brother Jones, uh, Brother Lily Holmes. We pray for them, our Heavenly Father. We pray for them as leaders. We pray that they may be strengthened and that they, the things that has caused them problems, we ask that you uh, relieve those things. Our Heavenly Father, we also come to you on behalf of Sister Angelina Smith. We pray for her family and we pray for all the sicknesses that is going through them and the problems and the setbacks they run into that they may be able to overcome them. And we ask you continually for the Holy Spirit to guide and protect them. Our uh, Heavenly Father, we also pray for Sister Golden Bailey. We just ask you to be with her, help her to continue her efforts to hang on to you, uh, help her to guide. Our family, uh, we ask you for strength for us, Sister David. Our, he our Heavenly Father, we also pray for Sister Harley. We are very thankful that she was able to gain strength in order to come and with, with us in spirit and in truth. We ask you to continue to bring about healthiness uh, for Sister Harley. Continue to be with her and her family. Continue to uh, her family to continue to be. Uh, around her to help her with things that's necessary for her comfort as well as her. Our Heavenly Father, we also pray for uh, Brother Johnson. Brother, uh, Brother Percy Johnson, we pray that the uh, problem he is running to this morning that he will be able to overcome. Uh, our Heavenly Father, we also pray for Sister uh, McNeil. We continue to pray for her strength. Uh, we pray that the loss that she has uh, uh, come into uh, of her husband, that she may overcome that. The family may overcome it. Be with her, our Heavenly Father, continue to strengthen her. Our Heavenly Father, we also pray for Sister Sharon Hart. We are very thankful for uh, the different things that we are able to, uh, uh, that's able to help her to regain her strength. Uh, we are thankful for the different insurances and the, we are thankful for uh, myself and the rest of the family for encouraging her and we are thankful that we are able to uh, obtain the different medicine necessary for our well-being. Uh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to continue to be with us, continue to be with Sister uh, Sims. We are very thankful for Sister Sims uh, and many, many things that she did. Uh, we are thankful for her inspiration as well. We call upon the Holy Spirit to guide, protect, and to inspire all of them. Our Heavenly Father, we just very thankful. In Christ's name. Our Heavenly 
Father, and also we are thankful for the soul that is about to be uh, baptized. Amen. The person of Sister uh, Lisa Arsenal, we are just very thankful for her and her strength and her uh, courage to come forward and, and ask what must I do to be saved. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Preparation of the Passover in about the sixth hour. And he said unto the Jews, Behold, but they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king. In the he and the living medium, that one will be crucified.
It's fine being read many of the Jews, but the place where Jesus was crucified was not yet seen. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then he said, the chief priest of the Jews replied, right now, the king of the Jews. But that he said, I am the king of the Jews. God will answer what I've been. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made more parts. And every soldier of the Lord was soldier. Now the coat was without seed. Oh, the top of God. They said that for among themselves, it's not bending, to cast lots for it, it should be. That the scripture might be fulfilled, it said, they pointed my raven among them. But my best they did cast lots. Things that was so sweet. And I stood by the cross of Jesus' mouth, my sister, Mary the wife of the oldest, and Mary the man. And Jesus back to us in his mother, and the disciples standing by whom he loved, and said unto his mother,